With industry experience that ranges from small studios to Netflix and DreamWork animation, Tonoko Panatoa has to be one of my absolute favorite animators for its fluid style that makes even the roughest of sketches feel absolutely alive. If you haven't heard of this absolutely wonderful man, please check his YouTube channel out, the link will be below. He has an abundance of technical advice and his own industry experience which he departs knowledge upon in various videos. Also check out his pilot, Dusk Flight, because for no real reason, it's just really cool and if it gets enough hype, it, I'd love to see it get turned into an actual animated film or series. In one of his videos, he talks about the habit of studying from live footage, and that's what leads us to today's video! <laughs> um, my dippest dear shit was kind enough to midstream act out a very dramatic fall, and that is what I will be using today to study from. For the animation, I initially started out by sketching the poses and trying to get the general uh, sizing correct, as well as trying to actually figure out I basically did this, um, what's the term? It's something like freefall animation. It's not the kind where you do like the main um, poses and then do in-betweens. It's when you just kind of animate each each one, one after the other without doing it like in-between too much. Although I think I did do in-betweens. I don't really remember. Um, <laughs> this entire animation was kind of a haze because it was a big learning experience trying to do something like this. I don't have much experience doing um, animation on twos. I tend to do a lot of animation on threes and fours, so this was very different for me as I was trying to animate on twos. I did, you know, animate a couple parts in threes, um, but there was also a section where I animated in ones, which was terrifying. For anyone who doesn't know what that means, animating on ones means that for each frame there is a new image, whereas animating on like twos or threes, an image shows for two frames or three frames at a time. Um, so it saves on a lot of like redrawing things. <laughs> One thing that I was trying to be very careful about was his hair. It has a lot of secondary movement. The other thing that I was very kind of terrified about was the speed in which he was falling because there's a point on the video where because he's moving so quickly the camera can't really pick it up so it smears and I don't know how to do that <laughs> I, was, I kind of chickened out of really trying it in this animation I did a tiny bit on the hand because um, I couldn't be bothered to draw it in a couple of places so I was like you can't see it he's falling it's fine um, but I think for if I were to do this again, I would definitely try and exaggerate that a lot more. Is that is a very good skill to have um, when doing 2D animation. I had a lot of fun with this because it's out of my typical doodleage. I, I tend to just kind of go for something and like just make a project, whereas this was a standalone kind of thing. Even the last video where I kind of you know was learning a little bit from where I was kind of utilizing another artist's knowledge with uh, Olaf Storm's audio and I made the little pyro animation. That in itself was kind of like a big boy project for me considering it took me like the month to do and I, you know, did all of the effects and everything to make it look all grungy and etc. Whereas with this, I kind of wanted just to have a little bit of fun and do, do it much more in like the study aspect, which, you know, is kind of following the general prompt for today. Um, so this, I mean, it still took me a whole second, <laughs> but this, this, this I didn't quite finish in the same way that I did with that. Adding in the line art was a lot of fun because I, I know what my idiot looks like, and it was quite easy to actually follow the rough animation that I'd done underneath because my shorthand tends to be pretty defining of the, of like, the posing and everything else. I want to have an experimentation with using a textured brush because Textured pencil brushes, they look really cool, right? But I don't tend to use them very much because in animation, they are an absolute pain in the ass because you get like all of the little teeny tiny, teeny tiny gaps, all of the little teeny tiny spaces. And because I'm on Clip Studio, there is no like fun angling around that like there is in say like Toon Boom. So it's very painful to fill in when it comes to the color part. But I knew that I wanted to try and experiment with that because I have Little, little project that I'm working on with a friend of mine that involves having animation that is with <laughs> a sketchy kind of like that involves this texture brush. 
So you can't really see it too clearly in like the animation itself, but the character is like, I was mostly trying to figure out how to actually have a finagling fiddle, fiddle the little way round, actually filling in the colors in a way that isn't gonna make it look ugly. Um, so I think I did okay, but I, we'll see. <laughs> We'll see. I, I, overall, I'm very happy with how this turned out. I think uh, I think the movement could have been a little bit better, but I, I really enjoyed this. I enjoyed this a lot. So, uh, yeah. I kind of like doing these little videos because I get to actually just kind of goof around. It's summer at the minute, and since I'm a university student, my third year doesn't start till like late September, beginning of October. I have a lot of free time. I have client work, like, a little bit. I don't know whether or not, you know, the few people that actually watch these videos would want to see that, so maybe I could make a video about that. Actually, you know, a realistic look at a very small artist's client base. Um, but yeah, so I mean, aside from like the projects and things that I've got going on, I'm having a lot of fun with just kind of goofing around, making silly little YouTube videos. Um, the... <laughs> The Clip Studio video definitely was quite controversial and it's really exciting. I know it shouldn't be, but it's really exciting to get hate comments. Um, because it's it's really funny to have complete strangers swear at you over the internet. I don't know why it's so funny, but it is. Um, it's a controversial topic on, on Clip Studio, so I can understand why people would be in disagreement with what I was trying to say, considering I'm not very good with words and the way that my words came out on that video it didn't really get my point across, but for the people that actually kind of understood what I was talking about and people that have had experience with the upgrade of version 1 to version 2, in the comments section you knew that they understood. <laughs> so, but yeah, I, I enjoy doing YouTube, it's, it's fun, I just get to goof around. So if you have any artists that you would like to see that maybe haven't had like people do breakdowns on because I don't see a lot of people breaking down kind of like habits of different things or like stealing concepts from bigger artists. I see a lot of people trying to paint like fucking Sam does art or something. I see that a lot but I don't see a lot of having fun kind of trying to learn some little thing. Not like an entire style from somebody but a little habit or a little um, method of doing something. So if you, if you have any artists that you'd love to learn a habit from, I can check them out and, and I will see what I can finagle together. From Tonico Panatoa, I definitely, I definitely understand a lot more through actually practicing rather than watching his videos about what he means when he says about the movement and kind of understanding how to actually manipulate the live footage and make it into a 2D foot, like, animated thing are um because in a couple of places you can see where i've like left a lot of detail kind of ambiguous and i can understand a lot more now why people do that i didn't do it too much because i'm a coward because i have a lot more practice doing very short animations that don't tend to have very much movement in them uh you know i'm, I'm used to having to draw all of the details so it's a little bit of a habit at this point for me but yeah, anyway, that that's what I learned. I learned a lot of different things from, from actually practicing this rather than just watching his videos. So I do highly recommend that you, you just, you know, you record a silly little video, something melodramatic, you know? It's like you gotta go exaggerated with it if you're gonna do it. <laughs> um, and just put it put it out there, you know? Give, give, it, give yourself some time, finagle a sketch from it, maybe finish it, you don't have to. I, I thought the finishing part helped me understand a lot more, especially when it came to like the, the trying to understand what smearing and like doing no detail in some areas meant. I need to do this again, obviously, to actually, you know, <laughs> make it look good. But yeah, I, I highly recommend this as an experience and I, I hope to God that I can angle better words because I'm really bad at writing scripts which is why half of this at the beginning was scripted and then me going through the animation process wasn't. Um, I apologize for that. <laughs> so woo, I'm gonna shut up and bye bye.